Iota Sign is going to continue through our 10 part series on Lost One Casting, and we pretty much got it nailed this time. And this time I didn't even use the concrete vibrator, but we'll get into that in a little bit. This Toyota sign is actually for a friend of mine, Theron, who does lawnmower racing and is an automotive mechanic friend of mine who supplied me with quite a bit of aluminum over the last couple months. And guess what? He's also a Toyota guy as well. So why not cast him a Toyota sign for the wall in the shop? Also, we're going to throw one of these up for a raffle in one of the Toyota sites locally here in BC, and I'll put the links down below if you want to throw your name in for that. So as I'm filling this with sand here, I'm going to make sure I don't get any of those chunkies in there like usual. And I'm also being very careful to make sure that all of the sand is kind of evenly going around the part and not kind of pushing on one side or the other. The key here is, is if you get it even, you won't have any problems with anything warping. Now, I decided not to use the concrete vibrator and it was actually a bit of a win. I just made sure I beat the living crap out of the barrel. And this is going to pack that sand down and get it nice and tight so that we don't have any blowouts or any collapses later on. Now, you'll notice there's two sprues sticking out there with foam. Now, in this case here, I'm actually going to fill both of those at the same time. I'm actually going to put a cup over top of it to make sure that when I fill it, both of them get filled. You see, one of the problems that I had when I did the trees on my last video was I filled one side and it heated the sand and melted the foam and it wound up collapsing and ruining one of the other parts. So we're going to do both of these at the same time and see how that works out. And as always, make sure I have all my safety gear on. And I've got some homemade gaiters. And although in the future I'm going to improve this, just for now, this is going to stop any splashes from burning through onto my boots. So speaking of safety, one of the important things that I do here is make sure I preheat all my aluminum that I'm going to melt down. And the reason for this is water expands roughly 1,800 times its size. So if I put something wet in there and that droplet gets to the bottom of that crucible, <laughs> well, roughly what's going to happen is it's going to boil over and basically shoot that aluminum out of there like a shotgun and it's going to spatter all over the yard and possibly all over me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off the slag off the top. This is all the aluminum that really isn't going to be any good for anything because it's got impurities in it like sand or oxidization. And we're just going to throw that in the scrap pile. Lifting the crucible out and pouring the aluminum are probably two of the most dangerous parts of the whole operation. So a lot of care needs to be taken here. I think down the road there's going to be a little overhead crane that I'm going to put in here. But I haven't quite figured that out yet and I've got some ideas floating around. If you have any ideas or something that you do for your foundry, maybe throw in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate the input. Now let's pour this thing and see how it all works out. Notice how I'm continually filling this reservoir up. Remember, if this reservoir goes dry at any point, I'm going to have a blowout of my casting or a collapse. So I'm pretty sure I banged this one out perfect. The only next step is to let it cool for about 20 to 30 minutes and then take all of this apart. I take a bit of a shortcut here <laughs> and I rip that can off there, saving me having to cut it off later. And this won't hurt the overall kind of product of my part. I'm pretty sure this has worked out quite well. I'm just kind of scratching around in the sand here just to see if both of the sprues filled up evenly and it looks pretty bang on. So after this cools in 20 to 30 minutes, I should be able to take it out. Actually, one of the problems that I've been having is, is I've been taking it out of the sand too early. And while it's cooling, the sand's actually holding it in place, not allowing it to bend. And I know this is pretty self-exclamatory, but like most guys, I'm pretty excited to see what I've kind of created. And in the past, I've taken it out a little bit too early. Now that the resting period's taken place for 20 to 30 minutes, I'm pretty sure we can pour this out now and have a straight product. Oh yeah, and don't forget, the cost of commission's a thumbs up, and I'd really appreciate you guys' support. And let's check this out and see how it turned out. It's looking pretty straight. I'm pretty happy with how these two turned out, and I've had minimal defects with this and all. There's a bit of scratchy sand on the back where the foam wasn't covered with plaster, and you can actually see some of the detail on the foam on the screw. Now, before you click off, the exciting part actually kind of starts when we do the two-part epoxy. And really, so long as you get everything level, <laughs> which was kind of an afterthought, it's pretty darn simple. It's just a matter of mixing your two-part epoxy 
and just burn in the colors where you want the colors to go. And then it'll self-level, maybe with a little bit of help, and you're off to the races. Then it's simple as running like a lighter or a torch over top of it. This gets all the air bubbles out. Presto, you're off to the races. Let's pour this black one out too. See how the black one turns out. Now, keep in mind, one of these is going to be a gift for my buddy Theron. And the other one, I'm going to give away on one of the Toyota sites. Check out the bottom below if you want to enter the raffle.